then they're, they're calling the person and inviting him to participate, to take a part in the Hilula of Rabbi Noah Kadosh. And especially in this amazing holiday, Chag HaSukot, Ushpizin de Moshe Rabbeinu, how can a person even start appreciating and having the right enough gratitude to Hashem Asher Tov Gemalano that gave us so much good and helped us so much and set our destiny to, to see it between generous and wise and holy and righteous people to spend our lives between people with good intentions, with pure intentions just to have that share in our life and not to hang out all day long in the streets with all the outsiders, just really to try to put our minds into the Kedusha, into the holiness. King David is saying to Hashem, Atatomich Gorali, you supported my destiny to believe in you. That's the explanation of the Mitzudot David on that verse. Atatomich Gorali, you were supporting my destiny. You made me to believe in you. Even the faith, Abraham Avinu is saying to Hashem, it's written on Abraham that Vayamen Hashem that he believed in Hashem and it it was count as charity. So one of the explanation is that he was holding that as charity that Hashem was doing with him to give him faith. Who am I to be worthy to believe in you? The fact that I believe in you is because that you revealed your face to me. You let me see you, you let me recognize you. Without you exposing yourself, showing yourself, revealing yourself, I wouldn't see you in the world. If Hashem chose to hide Himself, like we know that Moshe fell on his face when he heard that Hashem said, in that day I'm going to hide my face from you. Moshe lost his mind, he fell on his face, he fainted. Because if Hashem decides to hide his face from you, it's the end of the story. Now the fact that you believe in Hashem, it's because that Hashem is showing you proofs, evidence to His existence. If He'll decide to hide His face from you, that's it. You went off the derech already. You're, you're off the derech. The fact that we still have holy desire and good will and pure will to serve Hashem, that's the kindness, that's the mercy of Hashem, of the Creator. Now, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that today it's his Yorzeit, it's his Hilula. He was the messenger of Hashem Barach to complete something that started already thousands of years before. The righteous people, all of the time, they took that. It's a mission that all the righteous people took on themselves to reveal to to the world the kindness and the greatness of the Creator and that every person will have a way to connect himself to the Creator. Many things that happened during the years of exile and all kinds of sorrow and difficulties that we went through separated us from Him, caused arguments and doubts and lackings in our faith all the wars and decrees and bloodshed and, and, and all the difficulties and, and, and all kinds of, 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 of sorrow that we went through brought our minds to doubt Hashem and, and, and not to be so sure that Hashem He still loves us and cares about us and the righteous people from the fire and from the difficulties jumped out to the surface everyone with His unique power and talent and, and ability and permission that we, they received from heaven to reveal the godliness, to reveal the greatness of the Creator. And everyone did the best that they could. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, I like those Hasidim that their hands are filthy with grease from oil, working like mechanics with their sleeves uh, like they're, they're, they're working, they're sweating. He, he likes those kinds of Hasidim, the ones that are ready to jump into the fire, the ones that are jumping into the water, that are not afraid from some filth. And, and, and. So 
So Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, he revealed to us something that none of the righteous people was able to, to reveal with such an amazing light, like Rabbeinu. And Rabbeinu completed something that it's his uh, legacy for us, for the generations, that's what he inherited. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said that every person that will spend every day time in Hidbodedut, in a simple conversation with Hashem, so Rabbeinu promised to that person, to every one of us that will keep that advice, a promise that never been heard before, so great and so huge. It's written on Rabbi Yochanan that on his deathbed he was crying. More than 2,000 years ago he was crying. His students asked him, why are you crying? So he answered, I don't know, where are they taking me? It seems like I did everything good, I was serving Hashem, I was keeping all the rules, all the halachot, but sometimes there is a path that looks straight, but in the end you can reach death. And I don't know where they're taking me. It seems like I did everything fine, but I don't have no guarantee for that. So I don't know. So he was crying on his deathbed. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslev promised that every person that will dedicate in every, time, every day a certain time for a simple conversation of prayer with the Creator, just to talk to Hashem like you talk to a good friend, that was his main guiding to all of his students, and especially to Rav Natan, that he told him, when you have help from heaven, you talk to Hashem in your Hidbodedut like you talk to your best friend. To have a simple conversation like that every day with the Creator. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev promised that the person that will keep that advice, he, Rabbi Nachman, took that on himself to guide that person to complete his tikkun, to fix himself completely, and to walk in a path that is straight and, 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 and set for him by the roots of his own soul. That you will fix yourself completely and gonna heal all of your soul completely from head to toe. And that's a promise that Rabbeinu promised and gave us and every person that is dealing with difficulties in his life and with pain and sorrow and doubts and questions and he doesn't find himself when he goes and start talking to Hashem he sees that all of his problems just disappear and that's the secret that Abraham Avinu revealed on his own as a person walking in the desert and looking for meaning and purpose for his life and he found the Creator he found the Creator with prayer simple prayer Avraham Avinu didn't have a siddhu, he didn't have no rabbis to teach him, he didn't have no one. He was revealing the Creator, he just found out that there is one. And he started talking to him. And that's how Avraham Avinu established the prayer that we're praying in the morning, Tfilat Shacharit. Because every morning, first thing that he was doing in his life was to go and talk to the Creator. He had a certain place that in that place he was going and doing it but the dude. He was talking to the Creator, he was asking for all of his needs and he was asking all of his questions and all of his doubts and he was asking and praying and hoping and, and yearning to Hashem and when he had sorrow and pain he was sharing with Hashem and he was praying when he saw people suffering he went and asked for them for mercy when he needed help he went and asked for Hashem to assist him and to support him when he needed everything he needed that's what he was doing and Yitzchak Avinu followed his footsteps and did the same. But he was a little bit weaker than his father. He wasn't in the same level of Abraham. So one hour it would do it every morning was not enough for him. So he established Tilat Mincha. After four or five hours into the day, he felt the Yetzara was attacking him. He couldn't continue that day without another one hour of it would do it. So he went and made another one hour. And Yaakov Avinu was even weaker than him. So Yaakov Avinu made the third hour it was a dude, every evening and he established Mayriv. So 
On us, Rabbi Yochanan, in the Gemara is saying, Masechet Brachot, Velevai v'itpalel Adam, Kol Ayom Kulo. On us, it's written that we need to talk to Hashem Yitvarach 24 hours a day. We're losing our minds. Every minute, every phone call, you lose yourself. Every text message, you lose yourself. Every food that you see in front of your eyes, you lose your mind. Every smell, you lose your... Every moment you lose the purpose, every moment, even if you decide, okay, even Rabbi Nachman himself is telling on his childhood that when he started to serve Hashem, when he was young, he was falling every day a few times and he found it so hard and in the end he decided from that day on, I'm not going to back off anymore. And what was his decision, what he accepted on himself, he said that no matter how many times I'm going to fall, I'm always going to restart to serve Hashem again. He didn't say, I'm not going to fall again. You cannot stop yourself from falling. Sometimes the test is not not to fall. It's to see if after the fall, you will stand up back on your feet. If you will start over. If you will admit. If you will be humble enough to say, I'm sorry. If you will be able to go and to apologize and to restart. That's humility. And that's the path that is very important for me as, as a Hasid Breslev, as a person that loves Rabbeinu. You know that Rabbeinu promised many promises to his people and he said, Achad Manashai, one of my people, one of my people. And the students asked, okay, so how are we going to know if we're from your people or not? So he said, it depends only in one thing, in your love. If you love your Rebbe, so you're from his people. In that it depends. Not in the length of your peot, not in the length of your beard, of your zakah, not in how many times you've been in Uma, not if you're doing chatzot or not, in how much Rabbeinu is stuck inside of your heart. If you love the Rebbe, so the Rebbe is with you. That's what Rabbeinu also said to his students. He said, if you're going to love me and you're going to love each other, and love will be your bonding, your connection, you can pull me back to your generation. I can come and live with you. And we're not talking about spirituality or fantasies or dreams. So we're talking about help from heaven that you will feel that Rabbeinu is opening the path for you. That you will see the hand of the individual supervision on your life. That the right book is opening in front of your eyes. That you, the, the, that you see amazing things that happens to you in life. For an example, I was here in, in the Yom Tov and I, I like... I'm used to give lectures all of the time, to speak and to meet my friends and students all of the time, but now Hashem put that crazy idea to live in the forest into my mind, and we came here, <laughs> and there's nothing here. <laughs> but suddenly, in Yom Tov, we had a holy guest that knocked on our door and came and said, Hey, if you can come, we heard the Breslev came to town, we want you to come, and then I came, and then I hope that Hopefully I'll have a place to speak in, in the Ilula of Rabbeinu HaKadosh. From the desert, from the forest, it's hard to, to organize. And then Hashem Yitbarach is opening, and here we're sitting in a Breslev Sukkah, and in Melav and Malka, and, and, and you see that Rabbeinu is opening the path for you, that Rabbeinu is, is, is carving the way for you, that Rabbeinu is giving you the things that required for you, the things that you need to accomplish, the things that that, that is, is, is right for your purpose. Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender, that he was the, the, the main rabbi of, let's say, 50 years ago and, 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 and before in Breslev. And Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender said that Rabbeinu said already, Nitzachti v'anatzach, gamarti v'egmor. I'm going to win, I'm going to accomplish, I'm, I'm going to finish. He knew it. But Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender said, but we need to try that it's going to go through us. Yes, Rabbi is going to make it. The redemption will come. But you need to see that it's going to happen through you. How many people that will come back and will do tshuva, will come back to Hashem, that number is already written. The question is, how many of them will come through your sukkah, will pass in your table, will listen to your class, will receive a book from your hands, I remember a person, he doesn't remember me, but I remember him, that one time I was in the Western Wall, in the Kotel Amaravi, 
And I saw that hippie guy that came from Australia, barefoot, he was standing over there with his white uh, outfits from, I don't know in, in, in which market he bought the, that, those, those uh, clothing. And he's standing like that and talking and talking to the Creator, to I don't know who. And I had a small book of Likutet Filot, The Prayers of Rabbi Nathan. And I put that book between his stuff, all of his stuff. I just put it over there. He was busy in his meditation, flying from one side of the wall to the other. And I just put that book that I was carrying with me. We're talking about maybe 15 years ago. And after four or five years, I didn't see him after that. I just put that book. And after five or six years, I saw him with a black suit and a hat and he's a bus level chassid and you don't know what Rabbeinu is, is doing through you using your, your good will and your pure intention and using you for the purpose of such great things that as people I know about myself I can teach for hours I can teach for days straight and I will talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and the truth is that all of my words are coming out from that amazing book, the Likutei Moran. And even if I'm bringing my own unique shade and color and my character into and my sense of humor and my life experience, but still the advice and the hope and the chizuk and, and all the wisdom that there is no despair in the world at all and that you should talk to Hashem Barak, even if it become to be your nature or a second nature or that you find that that light is who that you really are in Pnimiut and it's really you but how did it came to your mind in the first place? How did, did you really start that did, or, or did that you heard it once from another Hasid Breslev or from another book or someone that spoke with you talked to you and, and gave you that book? I remember in the beginning of my tshuva I tried to read in many, many books, and I couldn't find myself inside of them. And Hebrew is my first language, and I can understand, and I learned, and, but the books that are like books of Torah are very hard to understand. Not because of the language, because that they're very, very smart, and they're holding very, very high wisdoms, and the authors, the righteous people that wrote them, try to put as much wisdom as they can in short words to make a long, long story short. And it's very hard. And I remember myself reading the Breslev books, and I said to my wife, at least now we found books that are written in Hebrew. I meant to say that they're understandable. You open the books of Breslev, you open the books that have been written by Rabbeinu or by Rabbi Nathan, been written 200 years ago in the world that was speaking only Yiddish and they're written like they've been written now in Tel Aviv in 2017 and like how can it be? Rabbi Nathan received such a divine spirit to know words that will be discussed in the streets today he's using slang of, of our modern I don't know if you can call it culture or, or reality but the, the language of the streets and he wrote that in days that they were talking on the Yiddish in their shul. And the Ukraine Yiddish that is so hard to understand. And even though that Rabbi Nachman was talking Yiddish and telling his classes and his, his words of Torah in Yiddish, and Rabbi Nathan was translating them to Hebrew, and it, it's, it's a modern Hebrew. And how can it be? Only because the, the Creator, He used those righteous people for the purpose of bringing us back to path, back to life, back to, to holy desires and to wake up souls that no one else in the world can wake them up. There is an amazing story on, on one of the students of, of Rabenu. His name was um, Pin, Rab Pinchas Yoshua. And Reb Pinchas Yoshua one time came out from the Tzion, from the holy grave of, of Rabbi Nachman. And he saw students that were young, young, young people that were waiting for him outside. And one of them was Rabbi Avram Sternartz. Rabbi Avram Sternartz was the grandson of Rabbi Nathan and also Rabbi Aaron of Breslev. So, we're talking about a very righteous man, but he was still a young kid. And he was waiting outside and he saw 
one of his rabbis, Rav Pinchas Yeshua, coming out of the Tzion HaKadosh, of the grave of Rabbeinu. And they were very happy to see him coming out of the Tzion, and he came, and Rabbi Avram Sternarts, in his book, is describing that meeting and telling about it. And he said, we saw Rav Pinchas Yeshua coming out from, from the Tzion of Rabbeinu, and looking at himself, like scanning himself, checking himself from head to toe. And after he finished looking at himself, he said, we felt like he saw all of his lifetimes, like, we, like he is scanning every particle of, of his being. He said it was so deep, like he was literally x-raying himself, checking every detail inside of himself. And he said that after he finished looking at himself, he was um, sighing, say, Ne'enach. And, and then he said that for thousands of years he was coming again and again to this world and the righteous people, the biggest righteous people, the leaders of the generations, they couldn't handle his soul. And he said it's like a builder that works to build a flow and a, a house and every righteous man was in charge on one flow. And he said the, the way that the builders are working is that they have a pile of stones with that with those stones they need to build that flow and the stones that are cut in a, in, a, in, a, in a good way and they can fit into the wall into the building so they're putting them and the stones that are not so perfect so they're working on them a little bit and and, and straightening them up and putting them into the into the building but there are stones that are harder to put them so the builder, he's working on them as much as he needs until he fixes them. But there are stones that are too hard even for the most professional builder. And, and it's impossible for him to waste so much time on that stone because he's got so much to do. So what he's doing with that stone? He's just throwing it away. He cannot handle. He said, so I am a stone like that. And he said, one builder after the other, and he mentioned the names of the righteous people, but Rab Ar Avram Sternhaut didn't mention the names of the tzaddikim. But we are talking about the main righteous people of, of, of all generations. One after the other, they gave up on him. They couldn't handle him. He was such a crazy soul, so problematic, like us, that no one can put you into a box. You cannot fit into yeshiva. You cannot fit into no shul. All of the time you're moving. You cannot sit on one chair. I had a permission from in, in school not to sit in class, not to sit in my... Like I was allowed to illustrate and to paint while I was... It, I don't know. They, 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 they realized there's no other way with me. Like I was the only one in class that I was allowed to go out from the class. I was not suppo I wasn't supposed to ask for permission to go out in the middle of the class. Like, he couldn't handle me. So those are the souls that the righteous people need to deal with them. So he said that one year, one generation after the other, the righteous people couldn't fix him, couldn't put him into, fit him into the building. And he said, until I came in the last generation, in that generation of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, and he said, and look at me right now, that today, Rabbi Nachman took me to such a high level, to such a high place, that I remember all of my lifetimes. And that I can tell you everything, single thing that I went through in all of my lifetimes. He purified his memory to such a high level, that he remembered all of his lifetimes. And he said, and that's the secret of Rabbi Noah Kadosh. That he can take care and fix those souls that no one else in no other generation could, ha could handle them. And we can see that on ourselves. I can see that on myself for sure. There is that story on Rav Nachman Micherin that or Micherin or Mitulchin, one of them, one of the students of Rav Nathan, his name was Rav Nachman, and one of a Hasid, one of of, the, of uh, another Hasid from another Hasidut came to him and asked him. Can you tell me a miracle, a mofet from your Rebbe, from Rab Nachman of Breslev? So he told him, I'm a miracle from Rab Nachman. Look at me, that's a miracle. 
The fact that I am standing with you here right now, talking to you, words of Torah, that I have that desire to, to learn and, 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 to, and, and to pray, where did that came from? Those gifts, we received them from heaven. So every person got a connection, that's the root of his soul, to some righteous people, to some righteous leaders that are bringing down spiritual bounty to the world. And we must have that gratitude. We must have that memory to remember where we received that all. That gratitude to Rabbi Noah Kadosh is very, very important for our path to be able to continue and spread the light of Rabbeinu, not to fall into that trap to think that that we're making those wisdoms and that we, from heaven, they gave you the permission to use those tools that that have been given by Hashem to the chosen ones, to those righteous people. And we must use them with honor and with respect and with a lot of gratitude. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is a very, very powerful and very unique righteous man that gave us the main gift of our life. It's the Bodedut. The power to have a relationship that based on trust, on, on, on loyalty, on honor, on truth with the Creator. Not only to be religious. Many, many people are falling in that trap of after seeking for Hashem Bach for a certain time in their life, they fall into the world of religion and they think, okay, now if I'll be religious, that's it. It, I, I, it will answer all of my problems. All of, I'm going to wake up early, I'm going to dive in nets, I'm going to catch an early minyan, I'm going to go to the mikveh, I'm going to do this, I'm, I'm going to learn, I'm going to do, do the fayomi, I'm going to... And in the end of the day, you look at yourself and you see, I'm not improving. It doesn't build my shalom by the peace with my family, with my wife. I'm not becoming a nicer person. I'm not becoming a holier person. I'm, either, I'm more religious. I'm more strict. I'm, I'm angry at myself more. I'm, I'm screaming at my children a little bit more. So, But uh, <laughs> that's not the way. That's not how it's meant to be. But when you have it bodhidut, when you have a daily time for a conversation with yourself, to settle your own mind, to talk to Hashem, to ask Him, what's going on? What do you want from me? Is that the right recipe that my children will be happy? That's, that's what you want. If I'm going to scream at them that they're not religious enough, it's going to make them holier. It's going to make them stronger. Does it work for me if someone will scream at me? Will it build me? No, so it's not the right way. To those understandings, you can come only when you have quiet time for yourself to discuss your issues and your thoughts with the Creator. Only when you separate yourself from the noise of the world, from, 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 the, from all of the, 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 um, the stress and the obligations, and you go to a quiet place, and over there, in that quiet place, you just pour your heart in front of Hashem. And you tell Him, Hashem, I need your help. I don't know how to do it on my own. I don't have a clue. Okay, so I can keep Shabbat, but I don't know if you're happy. I know, okay, that it's written that it's kosher, but I don't know if it's really kosher. Only if you're going to save me, I, I will eat kosher all of my life. A stamp and a sticker on the pack package won't make the food kosher. Only if you're going to supervise that only kosher food will reach to my mouth, will get into my mouth, only then I, I will eat kosher all of my life. No sticker in the world will guarantee that the food that I'm eating is kosher. After eight years you heard that that, that factory never had a no supervisor that visit over. In eight years no super, no mashgiach. So what are you going to do with that? Best, bad, best hashgacha and best name and, 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 and you paid so much and, and nothing. No, no mashgiach even visit there once. So what are you going to do with that? It needs to wake us up to understand that we need to have an individual relationship with Hashem based on who that you are, with your character, with your nature, that you will have the ability to express your own talents and your own wisdom and your own desire. And that's what that Rabbeinu promised, that the person will find the path that is fit to the roots of his own soul. 
that while being religious, that while keeping Torah and Mitzvot, you will be able to express your nature, your true colors, your true uh, talents, your true will, your, your treasures that God treasured inside of you. One can sing, he must sing. One can play, he must play. One can teach, he must teach. If you're not going to express yourself, if you're not going to talk about the things that are bothering you, the things that are occupied in your mind, you will never going to come back to who that you really are. Okay, so you're going to be a, a, an FFB, from from habit. But you will never going to be who that you really are. You're not, you're not going to be connected to the roots of your own soul until you will start expressing your, your soul, your spirit. The spirit reveals itself when you speak. Now, after 20 minutes, half an hour that I'm talking, you have some idea, okay, that guy, those are his thoughts, that's what he went through in life. A little bit, why, how you heard it, because I was talking. If I would sit quiet, you wouldn't know anything about me. You would think I'm an, an, a, a golden zebra or something. You say, okay, golden zebra, nice. You will never know who I am, what I went through in life. Only after I open my mouth, you can you can find out some details, information about me. Also about yourself. When you sit and you're always quiet and you never talk, you yourself, you're not aware to who that you are. You know that you're angry, you know that you're upset, you know that you're bothered, you know that you don't want to talk about those things, but you don't really know why. You not really know exactly how it started and what's the right cure and, and, and potion to solve your issues. But if you're going to start peeling and revealing yourself and opening yourself a little bit more, and it doesn't have to be with someone that you cannot trust on, it will bring out the light. When you talk to Hashem, you should talk to Him like you talk to your best friend, your best friend. That was the main advice that Rab Nachman gave to Rab Nathan, his main student, and that Rab Nathan passed to us, to our generation, that we will be able to talk to Hashem, to express all of our thoughts, all of our hearts in front of Him, like we're talking to the best friend that we have in the world, to a good friend, with trust, with, with honor, and also with truth. If you're disappointed and you're hurt and you don't know, when you find yourself lost and confused, you need to talk about that. If you're not going to talk about that, so so who going to talk about it for you? If you're not going to tell to Hashem Baruch, I'm scared, I'm confused, I don't know what to do, I need an advice, I don't have a solution, so who going to solve that problem for you? Only, only, only through that gift of it, Bodhidut, that the person finds a quiet place for himself, and in that place he will express himself, he will share, he will find that ability inside of him to to be who that he really is, to be honest about himself. I said it once in class and, and with that we'll we'll move to the next musical part of our amazing evening. That um, when a person got a good friend, so let's say that two people disappointed you in the same evening. You were stuck with a flat tire and you called two people. One of them is your best friend and one of them is someone that you just tried your luck with him but he's not a good friend of yours at all. And both of them said, I'm sorry, I'm busy, I can't help you. So, who will hear from you again after that night? Your best friend. In the day later, in the day after, you're going to call him and you're going to tell him exactly what you think about him and only why. Because you're counting on him. Because from him you expected that he will stand there for you like that you were standing for him. So if Hashem Barach is your best friend, and if Hashem Barach is also like the Orach Haim HaKadosh is saying, Ki shor achicha, when you see the animal of your brother, the, the Orach Haim is saying that your brother is Dakut Shabrichu, it's the Creator. He himself, the Creator, is putting you with him in the same level as the brother. So if for you the Creator is your best friend, He's the only hope, He's your lifeline, He's your truth, He's your rock, He's your brother. So then if you're disappointed from Him, if you have doubts, if you have questions, if you have things that are bothering your mind, 
you're going to tell him that. Like that Moshe Rabbeinu can say to Hashem Yidbarach, if you want to kill them, so you need to kill me first. Moshe Rabbeinu, he realized that the will of Hashem is that I'll be honest with him, that I'll be with him with all of my heart. And if I don't know, I need to ask. Torah, but I don't understand. If you cannot say to Hashem Yidbarach, I can't get it, I don't understand it, why in the world are you doing it? With respect, but without losing who that you are because of religion, because of being politically correct with Hashem, because of being terrified from rabbis or people or what. If Hashem is not someone that you can talk to, so what are you doing here? That's my question. If Hashem is not someone that you can live your life with, that you can share your pain with, so what are you, who are you praying to? If you're afraid of Hashem, so what's the, what's, what's the, the, the benefit of that relationship? If for you Hashem is a cruel leader, someone that you're afraid of, no, I can't talk about that, I can't do that, I can't... So what are you doing here? Are you crazy? I wouldn't do it. If for me Hashem wouldn't be a merciful father, a kind, loving father, I wouldn't join that cult. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. It's crazy. To do join to a group that you know that you... Okay... Here we're not discussing that, here we're not talking about that, here we're not doing that, here we're not this, we're not that. Okay, so what's the game? Punishing ourselves, closing ourselves, throwing ourselves back to the ghetto, to, 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 to dark days of, of fears and anxieties and stress. No, we cannot talk, we cannot speak, that's not allowed. That, that's not our nature, that's not the truth. The truth is that we need to be light to the nations, that we need to illuminate the world with the light of faith and hope and love and truth and trust in Hashem and be friends with each other and Ishet Rewi Azoru to help each other and to strengthen one, one each other and, and, and to do the best that we can. And if it's not positive and inspiring and, and lovely and beautiful, so what's the use? Why are we bringing other people to suffer with us? That's not the name of the game. If you see that Hashem is good, really good, good for you, it's good for you to be close to Hashem, you feel good when you're with Hashem, you feel good, so recommend to all of your friends to come and join you, Tamu, Ukito Hashem, come taste, it's amazing. But if you're suffering, so what are you doing? Why are you calling other people to suffer with you? So the main thing is to try to heal our relationship with Hashem our relationship with ourselves, to become your own best friend, to, ex to accept yourself, to understand yourself, to understand that Hashem made you to be who that you are, and now to talk about it with Him, to have a daily conversation with the Creator, talking to Him like we're talking to our best friends. That's the biggest advice, like Rabbeinu said, to have that time of talking to Hashem, it's the highest thing of them all. And not only one hour it bodedut. Rabbeinu didn't say that one hour it bodedut to ma'alak dola ve'elyona minakol. It's higher. It bodedut. Even one minute. If you have one minute and now you're asking, okay, what I'm going to do in that minute? So it bodedut to ma'alak dola ve'elyona minakol. So do it bodedut. That's the highest thing. One minute. I have only one minute. What can you do in a minute? You know how many words you can say in a minute? Please help me, save my life, I want to be happy, please make me happy. All of my family that will be happy, that will be strong and never be sad and healthy. Please Hashem that will be healthy and that we're always going to make it on time, that we're never going to be late. Yeah. Start talking, it's 10 seconds we, and, and look how much more. And all of Am Israel and please Hashem and help all of the people, all of the world that no one will be sick and everyone will be healthy. 20 seconds, keep on, that's one minute. How many words you can put into one minute? And those words cannot be described. You can never imagine. Even the angels don't have the permission to carry those words of, 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 of purity to the crown of Hashem. They must make those words, make an oath, and swear that they by themselves will rise to the crown of the king, to the, to the height, to the crown of the king, and will sit over there like good stones in the crown of the king. Even the angels, the most pure angels, are not able to reach to those heights that your prayers can reach. And you have that merit from heaven. And to do that, it's the most simple thing in the world. You just need to talk to Hashem 
like you talk to your best friend. Hashem, hi, how are you? What's going on? Good morning, good evening. How do you feel? Are you happy? I hope your children are good. I, I hope you, you, you have your, 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 your Shabbos was nice, that you, you were satisfied from your children. How are you doing, Hashem? Thank you for my Shabbat. My Shabbat was great. It was wonderful. I was praying. I was davening. I was, I was okay. Thank you. I was eating. Thank you for supplying everything I needed. Thank you, Hashem. I was learning in the Sukkah. Thank you. That's it. You don't need to be an angel. You just need to be yourself. And that's the beauty. And that's the gift. May the light of Rabbeinu HaKadosh and the light of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Ushbizin HaKadosh, and the light of the Sukkah and the light of Hashem will shine on us in and out. Like that it's written, Darkness will, will cover the world and the nations. But on you, Hashem will shine. And His honor will, will be seen on you. And the light of Hashem will be seen on us. Amen. Thank you. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all Him. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.